My name is Jack. I'm one of the founding engineers here at Thunder Compute. Today I was going to show you how to run the DeepSeq R1 model on our platform. Once you've gone through the process of like creating an account and an API token, you just go into your CLI and you're going to do a TNR create. Let's say, say we want like an A100 GPU um, and you can just use the Olama template. If we pull up the status of our instances, we're going to see that I've got a new one staging. I went ahead and created this other one earlier, so I'm just going to connect to it. Cool. And then once we're in there, we just want to type in start Olama. And we'll see that the Olama server, as well as the web UI server, start pretty much immediately. It takes around 30-ish seconds for that web UI to build. I'm going to use the 14 billion parameter model. If I just go to localhost, we'll see the open web UI has been loaded. And I just want that DeepSeq R1 14 billion parameter. We're going to pull that. Um, this is going to take a couple seconds. Looks like that's done. Um, we're just going to select it from our model dropdown. Uh, and we're going to ask a question. What's a non-cringe way to sign off from a YouTube tutorial video? And R1 is cool because it thinks kind of like, oh, like OpenAI's O1. But what's really cool about that is you get to see its thought process like all the way through instead of the little blurbs that O1 gives you. And so it's now started to think. Um, we're just going to give it a second. R1 obviously thought for a while there, um, over 200 seconds, but it also wrote like a couple paragraphs. But it gave, gave me like a pretty concise answer. And this answer is still being generated. But it tells me it's actually pretty good. And there you have it. If you enjoyed watching this tutorial on using Olama with Thunder Compute, don't forget to subscribe for more content like this. Thanks so much for watching.